I went home and my phone rang and uh, my agent said, there's a television show looking for a young man singer and they want to hear you. So I said, okay, and I went to the NBC studios because the show was going to be on NBC. And I did my audition and they liked me and they signed me to do this brand new television show that was going to be seen every Tuesday and every Thursday. And it was sponsored by Van Camp's Pork and Beans. And uh, every, every program was 15 minutes in length. And that was acceptable in television in those early days. So every Tuesday I would do a 15 minute show with a guest girl singer who would do one song. And every Thursday, I would do another 15 minutes with another girl guest. Rosemary Clooney made her very first TV appearance on one of my shows. What was the title of this show? It was called John Conti's Little Show. Little Show, 15 minutes. So- Was this an afternoon show or an evening No, 7.30 at night on the full NBC network. But at that time, the coax cable which was the way the network delivered its programming, stopped at the Mississippi River. And they hadn't finished it from the other side of the Mississippi to the West Coast yet. So all of my shows were kinescoped. You know, kinescope where they set a 16 millimeter movie camera in front of the TV set and closed it down so that it only took the picture part of the set. And then it was processed and shipped to all of the stations on the West Coast who were part of the NBC network. So that was, that was as good as it got for the West Coast until the coax came in to go all the way. And we used, everybody used cue cards in those days. So I had a very nice fellow who did my cue cards. And one day while I was rehearsing, uh, they told me that Irving Berlin's nephew wanted to see me. So I said, fine. They brought him in, and here was a fellow named Irving Kahn. And he said, John, nobody will listen to me, but I have the greatest invention to help everybody in television, and I can't get a foot in anywhere. He says, if you help me, I will really make it worth your while. I said, how do you want me to help you? He said, just come with me to the 20th Century Fox Studios over on 10th Avenue, and I have something I want to show you, this new invention. So he took me to this, this big stage in the studio where he had this invention. It was a contraption that was about, uh, oh, a yard and a half wide and two feet high, and a roller on the top, a roller on the bottom, paper attached to each roller and it was motorized so that typed on the paper in large letters about three inches high was all of your dialogue and all of the lyrics to your songs. So I looked at it and I thought, gee, that's pretty good. I said, uh, I'll think about it and I'll talk to my bosses. In those days, advertising agencies controlled everything, all the production. So by some circumstance, two days later, while I was on the air and singing a song, my cue card man, who was pulling the cards for me, suddenly had an, a fit of epilepsy. And he dropped all the cards. They went spewing across the stage floor. And I had to pump away and ad lib my way out of this thing. I finally got the show to a close, and the next day I ran to the agency offices on Park Avenue, and I said, this is what happened, and this is what this guy showed me, and I'd like to hire him now. We won't run the risk of accidents anymore. So my bosses at the agency said, you can have it. If it won't cost us any more, then we're paying the cue card guy. So I called Irving Khan, and I said, here's the deal. And he said, I'll take it. 
So that was the way teleprompter was introduced to network television or any television. It came into my studio, Studio 3B in the RCA building at NBC in New York, and Milton Berle had his theater gang just down the hall on the third floor. It took one week for the word to get to Milton, and he came running down to me and he said, show me, show me this, this invention. I think, okay, here it is. Now it was very primitive, and it was on a stand of its own, and you couldn't get it too close to the camera because the union guy said, hey, get away from the camera. So there was a separation. So the illusion was not complete. Years later, you know, the teleprompter was mounted right over the camera lens, as it is today. But in those days, that was it. He looked at it. He said, I want it. And from that point on, tele teleprompter went through the roof.